happy June 1st. It is officially summer. Well, I guess it's not officially summer because that's what, June 21st? But I mean, we celebrated Memorial Day. We've had a couple of 80 degree plus days in the shy. So I'm calling it officially summertime. So welcome to summertime and welcome to the Flow and Flourish podcast. I am your host, the capacity coach, Nicole Roan. And I thank you for tuning in. If this is your very first time, welcome to the tribe that talks openly and honestly about the things that can come up as we are wearing multiple hats, juggling all the priorities and figuring out how to take care of ourselves in between all of that. I absolutely encourage you to go back to the first five or so episodes and listen to the five pillars of flow that this community is built on because it will help you to be able to begin to flow and flourish in every single area of your life. For my peoples who have been with me for all the prior 40 plus episodes, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here listening to this week. And let me tell you, this is such a great episode and it's so timely because as we start the second half of the year, how many of us have goals and things that we said we wanted to accomplish, but we've been kind of afraid to start over? I'm in that bucket. I'm raising my hand. I know you can't see me, but I have. Sometimes when we get to this point in the year, we beat ourselves up and say, you know what? I should have done this. I wanted to do this. It's too late for me to start over. Ma'am, sir, because I know it's a couple of y'all sirs that listen. It's not too late. And that's what we're talking about with my guest, Krista Shavers. Before I give her the formal intro that I do for all of my guests, I do want to let you know that this episode is being brought to you by The Art of Flow, which is my 12-week signature individual coaching program that really helps you get unstuck and figure out how to take your next best step and put some strategies in place so that you can achieve your goals, so that you can have peace, so you can create balance between your personal and professional life, and so that you can learn how to truly prioritize yourself Without the guilt, because if you don't fill up your cup, you cannot take care of anybody else. So if you know you need help managing your capacity, come talk to me. You can go to my website. You can shoot me a DM. You can join that Facebook community. There are so many different ways to get in touch with me. Just know that you don't have to do it by yourself. Okay, let's talk about Miss Krista. I had the honor of meeting her last year when I was enrolled in the Purpose to Platform coaching program. And when I tell y'all she is dope and she's from Chicago, like, listen, I'm so excited to have her on. Let me go ahead and read her official bio so we can jump into this episode. Krista Shavers is a passionate creative content producer who has decided to use her decade of experience to forge her own path by using creative strategies in unexpected capacities. She uses her desire to help make others' visions come to life, coupled with creating storytelling to make ideas become a reality. Krista has dedicated her career to partnering with brands and organizations that desire to launch their mission-driven products or services to underserved communities. As a natural collaborator, Krista has had the opportunity to elevate communities through partnerships with notable brands such as ComEd, TGIN, and the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. Most recently, Krista became a graduate of Google's inaugural news initiative program. This achievement allowed Krista to launch her own major initiative, a Black-led digital news source. The company is named The Informed Village and is based out of Evanston, Illinois, and they have the continued sponsorship of both Google and Lion Publishers. As a creative content producer, Krista aims to continue to launch new brands and initiatives into the marketplace while also telling the stories of the communities she serves. Please help me welcome Miss Krista Shavers to the Flow and Flourish podcast. Hi, Krista. Hi, Nicole. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I've already given you a very formal introduction, but wanted to just kind of kick off our conversation, talking a little bit about how we met, because as we were talking offline, it was around the time of the, what do we call it? The world reset (laughs) last year in March. Yes. 
everybody just kind of had to have a reset because of the pandemic. And I know for me, I literally was in the process of starting over and I joined Purpose to Platform, which is where I met you and so many other phenomenal women. But my goal in doing so was to help me have a plan and a strategy for starting over because I was terrified. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. All I knew is that I was being obedient to this nudge of stepping outside of corporate. And so I want to know from you, with you being a serial starter over, as we've talked about, I guess, how has that shaped you and starting over over the course of this last year? For sure. So I... Back to being a serial starting over, I had a different like job almost every year since I graduated from uh, grad school. And, you know, even with school, every year you're starting over when you're in school, like that's Mm -hmm. natural. So I am someone who, if I know I don't want to be there, if I know I'm not being fulfilled, if I know that there's something better, or if I know it's just not working for me and I'm not in my purpose, I look for my exit strategy. (laughs) Oh. life's too short and if this is not where I'm supposed to be I gotta go figure out where I'm supposed to be so that's my whole method to life and that actually came out of losing my mother so I graduated from grad school in May of 2014 I started my first job which was a huge disappointment and where I learned that we still live in a racist, capitalistic place because my first job was the master's that required a degree. They paid me $10.10 an hour. Not 10, 10. 10, 10 an hour working for a news station in central Illinois. It was a great experience that led me to, gave me tools and things I needed to know that I'm still using today. But I knew that that was not the life that God created me <laughs> So you were looking for your exit strategy immediately. (laughs) Right. It's like, okay, like, so how am I going to use this to get to the next step? So I probably still would have stayed there longer. But so I graduated in May of that year. I started the job in June of that year. And then my mom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in October of that year, October 2014. And she died the next month, three weeks after her diagnosis. In November of 2014, she was 50 years old. Krista. Yeah. Ah, I have no words. Like, wow. I didn't know that. That was fast. Like, that's a lot of change all at once. It is. Yeah. So that's when I really had to think about what life, like I was already depressed because I hated my life at the news station. Like my hours sucked. I worked weekends and evenings from 1.30 p.m. till 10.30 p.m. Ooh. Monday through Sunday. My off days were Monday and Tuesday. I had no life <laughs> and I had no money. No life and no money with horrible hours. Girl, and that's a lot. Was that This was when the first movement of Black Lives Matter happened when, in Ferguson with the, I can't remember the person, yeah, I think that I was traumatized from that time. So I can't remember all the names right now because I reported on this every single day. I was the producer for the news station. So I was the one running these stories. So I, it was the protest going on over East after I think it was like Freddie, the guy who was choked to death mm-hmm. by the cops for selling the loose the cigarettes on the street. So that was the first time. And my white male counterparts who had less formal education than I we're getting paid the same job, same position. We're getting paid more than me. So I was I just like, I can see my face because <laughs> I was like, this world sucks. <laughs> and I don't feel like I have to live this way. So I need to figure out what's next. And then I already felt that way when I started. And then when my mom died, that really solidified things for me. Mm-hmm. And then also working in central Illinois. People don't know this because they just know Chicago. I like to say that Illinois is basically the South if you take out Chicago. So (laughs) (laughs) it's just as conservative, low-key, just as racist. 
this guy I dated, he was a lawyer for the governor of Illinois. And he stopped to get gas in a town on his way back home to Chicago. And the gas register people, they were like, hey, the monkey wants gas. Yeah, that's <laughs> Illinois in the 20 teens. Um, not that long ago. And just when all those stories were coming out, just people were saying things and blowing it off. Like, well, you know, it's the same thing we're hearing now. If they comply, they wouldn't die. If they weren't doing X, Y, and Z, just a lot of victim blaming. So it just really made me rethink what it was meant to be a woman, what it meant to be a Black person, and what it meant to be a Black woman in this space. I knew that I needed something different. So that's when I started my journey of having to restarting. Mm-hmm. So I left Your there. Well, starter overness. <laughs> yes, my career starting over. So after my mom passed away, part of the reason I took that job was because my parents were going to help support me financially. Once she passed, my father was no longer able to do that because they were a true like two parent income home. So I was even more broke <laughs> than I thought I was. <laughs> like having a rug snatched from under you right. in a lot of different ways. Right. So I was broke and heartbroken because we don't have, can't like that didn't run in our family. And her mother and father lived till 80 and in their 90s. And then she has relatives who live to their hundreds. So we always thought she'd be here for a long time. And that just made me really think life. You don't know when your life's going to end. So don't stay in places that you know you're not fulfilled in. You know you're not living in your purpose. You know that's not where you're supposed to be. So I took that advice. <laughs> and I was offered a part-time job. So I was in Springfield, Illinois at the Capitol, and I started off as a political reporter from the Capitol. So I was very knowledgeable, and then also my degree is in public affairs. So I knew people, I knew what was going on in the Capitol, so I was offered a lobbying position. I couldn't do that full-time due to my schedule, so it was more so like lobbyist assistant. So I was learning the ropes. I was still able to work on legislation, but it was from a part-time matter. The main piece of legislation I worked on was for energy companies. Mm -hmm. And so ComEd here in Chicago or Northern Illinois' main power source, they were there and they saw me working. So they saw this little Black woman girl (laughs) working in this space and it intrigued them. So they're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, like learning more about me. So I was able to make a connection with them. Eventually, the news station let me out of my contract. So when you're a reporter or a producer, you have to sign a, either a two-year or a three-year. You have to sign a contract and you can't break it. And if hey, you break that's it, a long time. If you break it, they can sue you for a portion of your salary. So I told you I was making 10, 10 an hour. So my salary was 21000 for the year. So if I broke that contract, they could have sued me for money I didn't have. (laughs) For more than what they were paying you, basically. Yes. So thankfully, because of my family situation, they gracefully let me out of the contract. My landlord let me out of my lease. So I was able to move back home. And I also needed to care for my mother's mother at that time because she was the daughter who was caring for her and I'm the only daughter. So, you know, who Mm -hmm. that usually falls to daughters. So I moved home. Mind you, I'm only 23. I just probably just turned 24. So I'm pretty young. And so ComEd offered me a job. So I was able to start working at ComEd using my talents, but getting more into what I do now, the marketing and media space and doing it from like outreach and community work because I worked for their nonprofit helping with their marketing and communications Mm -hmm. and project management. And that was great. But again, I knew this is not my end destination. Again, before my mom passed, I knew that was not it. And I wanted to find Mm it. A lot of people think of Barbie as this ditzy, blonde, plastic figure. But I think of Barbie as empowering. She was my first role model. Mm -hmm. was a boss. She did everything in every sector and she owned everything. It's Barbie's dream house. 
Is it Barbie's Cadillac? Is it Bar- <laughs> Barbie's car? <laughs> yeah, Barbie's beach house. <laughs> it's Barbie's beach house. Why would I not want to be like Barbie? Plus, she did everything. She was a flight attendant and a pilot and a doctor and a nurse <laughs> and a vet. So she did it all. So I was like, I probably can't do that. But why can't I do as many things as I like to do? Like, you only get to live once. And I felt even more so that way once my mom passed. Like, I'd rather try different things and enjoy it, get experience, or again, find what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you something, though, because I know during your journey, right, yours probably looks a little different from others. But I'm sure during this habitual, consistently starting over, You've come across other people who want to start over, but have been afraid to do so. Because like I was saying in the beginning of starting joining P2P, that alone was scary for me. What has it been in your experience running into and working with other people who may have felt opposite of how you felt? Like starting over just terrified them. What are some of the things that you've experienced or kind of helped them through? So my viewpoint in life is very spiritual, faith-based. I was raised by ministers. God gave us talents, skills, and passions and experience. And he placed us in certain places for a reason. And if you know in your spirit that what you're doing in your life does not align with what God placed in you, we talk about this, you probably aren't being obedient. (laughs) You were probably not listening to what he's telling the call that he has on your life. Just so y'all know real quick, Krista been snatching my edges behind the scenes about obedience. So that's why she's chuckling. You may proceed. (laughs) Yes. So we might not be being obedient to the call that God's had on our life. And two, if you don't like even view life in that way of spiritualness, or we're called to do something, Again, we only live once. Do you want to live a life doing something that you hate doing? Do you want to end your life, get to retirement, and not be happy with what you've done for the last few decades? Do you not want to be fulfilled? If you were to lose your life right now, would you feel like you did what you wanted to do or would you be full of regrets? I'd rather live a life of fewer regrets than live a life of safety you know? Yeah. It's funny because we were talking about that on a clubhouse last night. It was me and a couple of our other P2P sisters. So Evelyn, Gail, Whitney, and Danielle, we were hosting it in her room. And we were talking about similarly, why do people stay in spaces or relationships that have outgrown them? And one of the things that we talked about was work. And me being on the HR side, I had this notion that if you start a job, you need to stay for at least a year to understand whether you really like it or whether it's a good fit or whatnot. But I remember being in roles two, three months in feeling like I know this isn't going to work, but being terrified to start over because of some of the stories that I heard in my head or some of the standards that I set for myself. Like, how dare you be in HR and serial jump from job to job to job? How can you help somebody who feel similar to that? Like, how do you start over even when you're telling yourself, like, I have to stay here because of X, Y, and Z? I ask them what their goals are. What kind of life do you want to live? Because when you start really thinking about it and envisioning it and writing it down and writing down the experience that you do have, the experience that you'd like to have, And then just even the life that you want to live, is that role getting you to that goal? And if the answer is no, then you need to figure out something else or else you can, like you said, you have that one year, you can just turn into where you spend the next five, 10 years spending a year at jobs you don't want. (laughs) (laughs) And that's real because how many of us look up and are like, you know what, I'm gonna leave as soon as another job come along, or I'm gonna stop dealing with this person as soon as I get to X, Y, and Z. And part of where I was going with that is that that fear kind of immobilizes us. We're so afraid of what's on the other side that we're willing to stick with things that make us 
feel horrible, that stress us out, that we don't even like. And then before we know it, years, like you said, it's been a decade and you still at the same job. You still complaining about that same friendship or relationship. Right. How do we push past that fear to start over? Because I know one of the things you and I talked about offline too, was that you've come in contact with even young folks that are like, I'm 18, I'm 19, and I don't want to start over. I was that young folk. (laughs) Talk to me about that. So like who I am now is completely different than who I was in college. I went to college thinking, I picked this major, I have to finish with this major. Even if everyone is telling me while I'm in this major, what life for the people in this major looks like on the other side. And I don't like how that sounds. Mm -hmm. I felt like it's better to get the degree, finish, get out of there and start working instead of staying there, staying longer, trying to figure it out. So it was like partially pride. Like a lot of that's pride. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to admit maybe that you might've made a mistake. Mm. And a lot of times it's not even mistakes. You don't have all the information. Unfortunately, especially 18, 19 year olds, you don't know nothing. (laughs) And you don't know what you don't know. And you're trying to go get yourself some experience. (laughs) Exactly. I found out about 10 times the amount of careers that were possible in my senior year versus what I knew in my freshman year. Even I knew about more uh, career options in my senior year than in my junior year. So even now I know about so many different types of careers that you can have, partially because I was in news and in politics. And both of those things just touch so many aspects of our society. Mm -hmm. And I found out that doing both of those things, one in politics, people have to start over all the time because every however many years, two years, four years, it's a new election. So whether or not, Um, yeah, right. So like there are the career politicians who are able to keep that same role forever and like be in those same positions forever. But that's not the standard across the board. And if it is, again, how effective are you being if you've been here for 35 years, if you've not been actively passing legislation that's keeping up with the times? Like a lot of the reason that we are in the position that we are in in America is because people aren't moving on. Mm -hmm. They're staying here. They're sticking with the status quo. They're like, well, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Times are still changing. Also, it might not seem broken, but that's if you aren't looking at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Are people happy? Are people healthy? Are people wealthy? Are people showing care and love for their neighbor? Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, we're not okay. And the system is broken. A big part of being able to start over is to get from that side of it, right? To go from just being in survival mode to being able to thrive. You can't do that if you're not willing to take risks and willing to start over and willing to try something new. And it sounds like a lot of the things that were uncovered during World Reset when the pandemic hit need to take that same approach that a lot of the things that are going on in society would benefit from starting over to some degree. Absolutely. Because even our political system was created when our population was significantly less and not as diverse. So we still have the same amount of representatives that we had when we did not have millions and billions of citizens. When we had like 200,000 people. Right. right, When it was like 200,000 people, maybe a million at most across the country. That's when our systems were created. Like our world is different than what our systems are written for. So things need to change. So as I mentioned, or as we've been talking about, the world is in reset now. So it's so great because a lot of people need to start resetting because of they're realizing they weren't making enough money or they're realizing since I've been at home, my family is better. I want to continue to improve my family or maybe my health is better because I'm able to take care of it. So what, how can I make sure that I'm both able to work and not, like you said, not just survive, but where I can thrive. Yeah, that's good. And it's a good segue to kind of talk a little bit about how do we get there, right? How do we figure out how 
to go from not being willing to change and being afraid to just start over to a point where we can start over. Knowing and understanding everybody's had a different walk in life, but what are some tips that you can share as a serial starter over that have helped you to really navigate through that lane? For sure. Well, one, a couple of things are back to what you said, you don't know what you don't know. So research, starting to look out of your circle, starting to like Google is amazing. (laughs) You can Google, like you can take a talent that you know you have and you can Google, how can I turn this into a career? How can I make this a profession? Like YouTube. So just the internet, it has a wealth of information to find out what is out there and how are people making money? And then not just look at how people are making money, but then looking into stories of people who have started over. Mm -hmm. People like Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry was homeless living in his car. Now he has a bowling alley in his house and he gave sanctuary to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I don't know how to pronounce that, but (laughs) Meghan Markle and Harry (laughs) being a homeless man in his car. So what did he do? So looking at stories like that, Taraji P. Henson, she like left her hometown, moved to California with her son. She had $200 Mm -hmm. or something like that. And now- In her 20s too. She she wasn't like, you know, 16, 17, 18. Exactly. J.R. Rowling, the woman who wrote the Harry Potter series, her transcript for Harry Potter was rejected multiple times before it was accepted and now look at her she has one of the most popular franchises in the world Mm. and she was like in her 50s and now she's super duper wealthy so looking at success stories and seeing how vivid and how they transition even samuel jackson i just read recently he like got his first major role when he was 54 really he been yeah. old for a while that's why he looked old yeah yeah (laughs) so like looking at people like that And seeing how they started over. And then also sometimes we'll like look at our obstacles and make excuses. One of the most inspiring stories that I've seen is this Paralympian. Her name is Amy Purdy. Her goal when she was a teenager was to travel the world and snowboard. She contracted meningitis at 19 and she had a 2% chance to survive, to live. Mm -hmm. They amputated her leg and at 19 and back to a lot of 18 19 year olds think like whatever I pick uh, this is what I got to do and I'm stuck here she taught herself how to snowboard again Mm. as a paraplegic and then she became a gold medalist in the Paralympics and then she I don't know if she won on Dancing with the Stars but she was like a finalist I remember seeing her on there yeah right so looking at people like that like she had all the excuses in the world but she overcame them. She knew that what she had in herself was bigger and stronger than her obstacles. And she knew that if she was that 2% of survival, what else can she do? So understanding too, think about, (laughs) this might be a little inappropriate. I'll try to say it in a scientific way. When our fathers and our mothers came together to love each other, there's multiple sperm that go into our mothers. Mm -hmm. We beat out every single sperm to fertilize our mother's egg. And we made it through those nine months. We made it through birth and we were born and now we're here. So we already beat odds. Mm -hmm. We're already winners. So if we look at that winner spirit that we have in us, that fire spirit, that stronger, faster spirit that even got us here, what else can that do? Mm, I like that. And I hear four things. Number one, first thing you can do is to research, right? Use our best friend, Google. Right. Number two is to really think about and figure out other people who have had to start over and look at their success stories and let that guide you and drive you. The third thing that I heard was come up with solutions instead of focusing on what you believe isn't going to work or can't work. Think about ways that it can work. Remember whose you are, because out of all the things that could have happened and all the babies that could have come to fruition, who you are is a result of God. And if you've already gotten through all of the different dynamics and intricacies of even being able to be born into this world, 
that means that you're here for a reason. So really being able to rely on all four of those things can help us if we are struggling with starting over. Because I remember hearing a long time ago and not understanding what this meant, that the only thing that's constant is change. The more things stay the same, the more they change. I'm like, that sounds like hoot nanny. Who says that? <laughs> like, what is that? But it's the truth. And the more that we embrace that and go with the flow and understand that it's okay to start over, that it's a natural part of life and people do it every day, sometimes because they just desire to and people want to shake things up and other times just because things happen, right? Like you said, when your mom passed and the pandemic and just all these different things, sometimes life throws things at us that cause us to have to start over. And the sooner that we learn how to navigate through that using the tips that you gave, the better off that we're going to be. Right, exactly. And then another thing is when God has purposed you for a call, if you don't choose to go about it, he's either going to have a life force you into hit the call or he's going to give that call to someone else. Do you want to continue to live the life that you don't like because you're comfortable and you feel safe? And you aren't trusting God because, again, he created you. He decided you were here. He was with you through all the obstacles to get you to this point. And he also gave you desires and passions and talents in order to use those to live a life more abundantly. And if you're not living that abundant life that he calls you to live, again, he's either going to force you into it, which can hurt. Mm. Or he's going to give that to someone else, which will hurt, honestly, even more. To watch somebody live out your dreams like we were talking about. That's painful. That's tough. I don't want that. And I know it took me a long time to be obedient and to start over because I was comfortable. Like who in their right mind walks away from a six figure cushy job, right? Right. When you have a calling on you and when you're being obedient, the reward is so much bigger than that. And I would, you know, be very, very upset if. I saw someone who was doing exactly what it is that I'm doing, knowing that it was supposed to be me doing what I'm doing. So absolutely. So just the whole thing with all of that is putting faith into action, having faith that one God's got you like because he has something for you. Mm -hmm. So having faith in the fact that he's got you, but also having faith in yourself. Because when you're choosing not to switch or start over when you know you're not where you're supposed to be, That's you either saying you do not have faith in yourself or you do not have faith in the person who created you, God. And either way, that's not okay. So you really have to activate your faith to start over to get to where you need to be. And oftentimes failures, because you might try and you're like, I failed last time. No, you learned a lesson. (laughs) It wasn't a failure. (laughs) Yes. You learned a lesson so you can do better next time. So, yeah, I agree completely. And I was telling you too, the talk that I was part of this week was around selective surrender. And so this conversation makes me think about that. And I'm going to do a separate episode on selective surrender completely, but just really talking about when it's time to start over, how we'll say, you know what, I'm going to start over just this part, but I'm not going to fully start over because I'm afraid. And just the way that both trust and belief play a role in that. Because to believe in my mind is one thing. You can believe all day long, like, oh, yeah, I believe the world is round and that God's going to do what he said he was going to do. Insert whatever belief you want to put in. But to trust that is totally different. Trusting that means you're taking actions that are in alignment with that belief. And so I love that you talk about activating our faith so that we really can step out and start over when we're supposed to. Absolutely. And then also with that faith, we have to remember if God calls you to do it, he's got you. So all the things we feel like we don't have, or we don't know, or if we know we're supposed to be here, but we don't have access, God already has all the resources out there for you. I now want to do things that cost a lot of money or need to do things that cost a lot of money. 
And I was trying to figure it out myself and I became even more broke than I was before <laughs> I started trying to figure it out. And overwhelmed and stressed and all of that that comes with it. Exactly, because I was trying to do it myself. But like, we also have to remember like that faith and action. You need that the entire journey. And from deciding to start over, taking the action to start over, and then the walk into this new life that you were committing to do knowing that we're not supposed to do it alone we were never ever created to do it alone Mm -hmm. and he has all the answers and all the resources we need to get there it sounds like it's a process is that fair it is a process right it's failure but again failure is not failing it's just lessons one of my favorite books that I've been like re-listening to over and over again right now is Think and Grow Rich. And it's the principles going over all these people who became wealthy in American life, the people who created the steel industry, Henry Ford, all these other people, Microsoft. I'm listening to the editor's version, more recent edition. And the principle for everyone was having faith in themselves that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And these failures are learning experiences to get to where I need to be or they're eliminating experiences. You might have tried this way or try it with these folks, but these weren't the folks you were supposed to be doing it with. Mm. So it's failing because you got the wrong people in your boat. Mm -hmm. You got to go back, drop those people off to start this journey again, because they ain't supposed to go with you. And pick up the right folks. Exactly. That's a whole word. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Oh, okay. Before I let you get out of here, I got a couple of questions that I need to ask you and we'll just go from there. So number one, if you could go back in time and have a conversation with the 17 year old version of yourself and give her one piece of advice and one piece of advice only, what would it be and why? That's so hard. I know. That's the point. (laughs) Um, take your time can I say two if not it's okay I can say two I'll make an exception for you you can say two okay what I would tell 17 year old Krista is you already have everything you need to do everything you want in this world Mm. that would be the first thing the second thing be wise with your money (laughs) (laughs) Both of those are very important. They are. That's very all I'm like. Important. I need both because. <laughs> and honestly, they go hand in hand because yes, you have everything that you need to do what you want to do, but you still need money to be able to carry those things out and being able to manage that in a way to carry you through on your journey. So I love that. Those are good. Nobody's ever said that before. Really? Oh, okay. Oh. Look at you, first timer. Yay, that makes me excited. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then to back to like they work together because when you're not living in your purpose, when you don't think that you have everything you need, when you're lacking faith in life, when you're in a place you don't want to be, the way you manage money and the way you use and view money either comes from a place of lack or it comes from a place of trying to self-medicate from the things from an unhappy life. So I'm sad or I hated my job. So I need to go out with my friends and go and spend all this money to eat out and feel better in this weekend before I have to go back to this job that I hate that doesn't treat me well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you knew that you had everything you needed, you wouldn't be out there spending like crazy. Exactly. I don't feel like I'm as beautiful as I'd like to feel. So let me go and buy this outfit to make myself feel more beautiful. Or get me some cheeks so I can twerk. <laughs> yeah, cheeks so I can twerk. Let me go and get me some, get like, let me just go and do all these things. And it's because I don't feel like I have everything that I need. You're trying to buy your way to figuring out what it is that you need when the reality is everything you need is already inside of you. So I love that. Absolutely. Thank you for putting that together. You're welcome. Okay. Question number two, because you are on the flow and flourish podcast, 
tell me one thing that you do on a regular basis to make sure that you're able to flow and flourish and show up in excellence. When I feel overwhelmed, I always give it to God. I either go in real play prayer. My adopted favorite phrase is Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> Listen, I got to tell you the other day, cause you know, Amaya just had prom and graduated. And I was like, Jesus, I need you to take the wheel and be a fence all at the same time. <laughs> Girl, yes. And be a fence. So I love right. that. <laughs> yes. Like block out all of the snares and traps of the enemy. Take everything that's not of you out of here. Remove me. But also, I don't know how to navigate this journey. So take the wheel and you drive and I'll just be a passenger. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's where I'm at most days. <laughs> Be a fence and take the wheel. Okay. And I last love time. that. You like that? Yeah, I like that. I'm stealing it. Thank you. That's okay. You can have it. I stole it from somebody. I don't know who, but you know, it's yours to steal. <laughs> <laughs> last but not least, I know we've talked about a lot of things. And so what is the one thing that you want the listeners to walk away with as a result of our conversation today? When you think about starting over. Kind of back to just what I've been saying, God already placed in you everything you need. And then the rest is submitting to him through faith. Mm. So activate your faith. Activate that faith. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ma'am, I need you to tell everybody where they can find you, how they can work with you, because I know firsthand all of the great things that you've been able to do. And part of you starting over has been, you know, part of the business pieces that you're doing now. So tell everybody how they can work with you, where they can find you and all of that good stuff. For sure. The easiest place to find me and get in touch and learn more about me is my website, www.krista. So my name is Christ with an A, C H R I S T A <laughs> Shavers.com. So www.kristashavers.com. And then I'm also on Instagram at Krista the Producer. Okay. And you know I'm including all of this in the show notes, but ma'am, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast today and talking about starting over because I know there are so many women from all walks of life at all ages who are hesitant to start over. And for me, even, you know, our conversations outside of here help me to know that there are going to be other times where I'm going to have to start over. And even in the midst of what I'm doing now, it's a constant pivot, right? When you're changing how you do business, who you do business with, and you're growing, it requires you to activate that faith muscle so that you can start over and do so in a way where it's beneficial to you. So thank you for being part of the podcast today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Listen, was that not amazing? I'm so grateful to Krista for her lending her voice and her expertise to really talk about what it really looks like, feels like to start over. And she gave so many different references and such great tips on any of us that may be struggling with that. So at a bare minimum, I hope that you're able to take and implement some of those things. Namely, number one, you got to activate your faith in order to start over. You have to be able to tap into that piece because without it, you're not going to be able to overcome the different challenges that come up against you, whether it's your mindset your heart flow, the people around you, just so many different things. So it really takes stepping into and activating our faith in order to start over. And let's be clear. Let me keep it 100 as people say. Had I not decided to start over, I wouldn't even be doing this podcast. I wouldn't have the impact that I've been able to have. I wouldn't have the speaking engagements, the coaching clients. I would not be as fulfilled as I am today had I not activated my faith and went forth with starting over. So if this is something that you are struggling with, you know where to find me. DM me, find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and let's just talk about it. 
Let's talk about what's going on and what's keeping you from starting over because I know it's not easy. It's scary as hell, to be honest. Just like we talked about, yes, it's scary, but are you going to let that fear immobilize you and keep you from being in alignment with what God has called you to do? So I'm not going to beat you up anymore. I'm just going to say thank you for listening and make sure that you tune in next week all month long. We have so many great guests. We're going to be talking about being a black woman in America, celebrating Best Friends Day, just so many wonderful things. And of course, you know, Father's Day is this month. So talking about healing from daddy trauma, too. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, you are the best part of this podcast. So thank you for allowing me to pour into you. Make sure that you're sharing this with other women as well, who you know absolutely need to hear it because we all got somebody that needs to hear this because they're afraid to jump. They're afraid to start over. They're doing the what ifs. So help them. If you love them, help them and send them this episode. Until then, I look forward to continuing to be your capacity coach and helping you to create balance between your personal and professional life without ever having to sacrifice yourself, your family, and what matters most to you. Talk to you soon.